What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man Goldie. And we are going through this week's NFL slate from a more of a projection based perspective. We're going to be doing a few of these different shows. And you know that we did the one with Sheets already with our sort of our first look. Uh, Rody and I will have our final takes on Friday, and then we'll do our live show on Sunday at eight at 11 Eastern. Um, but Goldie, really happy to have you, man. And he's been doing a lot of great work for the site behind the scenes. We really feel like with him and at whatever, everything he's doing, we have the best aggregated information throughout the industry of any site out there. And I would encourage you guys to like the videos and check these out because uh, our, our, our information, our ownership projections, everything is a balance of what is historically, uh, what, what everyone else is, 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 is basically doing. Uh, we're giving you the one centralized area to actually focus on what everyone else is projecting and it's all combined in our true DSFS average score. Um, but anyway, Goldie, really happy to have you on. Going to go game by game and through this NFL slate. How are you doing? And uh, yeah, just talk a little bit about yourself and if, if what, you got, what you've been doing before we uh, jump into it. And then we'll uh, get into the slate. Yeah, man. Uh, really stoked for football season. Um, been really working hard on the projections uh, kind of in the in the background. Um, you know, we got a bunch of bunch of winter sports coming up that we're, we're going to be uh, really trying hard to um you know, aggregated all of this industry info uh, for everybody and get it up on the site for everybody to take advantage of. Uh, I think they're, um, I think it's really good data and knowing what everybody is doing, um, you know, really puts all of us in, in pretty good position to be able to uh, make some good decisions and, you know, get different with our teams and, um, and hopefully make, you know, make some good runs. Um, but now that, uh, now that, MLB is is winding down. Uh, really looking forward to um, focusing in on on NFL and uh, some of the other sports we got coming up. So let's uh, let's get into it, man. Yeah, same here, man. Um, all right, well, let's get into it. I, I pulled up my screen here. We're going to be using Saber. So now you guys got to take these projections with a grain of salt because we're doing this Wednesday night. So things are going to change between now and Sunday. We know that with injuries, with some receivers out, all of a sudden we got some extreme value. Uh, uh, Hunter Renfro comes to mind as a as a big as a big part that could change the slate. Whether Mac Hollins becomes really popular again, things like that. So we don't know what that what exactly is going to happen, but we are going to be using Saber Sims projections. We also you can see over here about, have our projections and some of the ownership projections early this on this early on are like going to be just drastically different. They'll end up averaging out to making some sense. Um, but right now it's sort of it's sort of everyone everyone sort of all over the place on a Wednesday night. So. Goldie's really, really good with these projection things. So we're going to start off with the first game. Like this is, I don't care what anything says. I've told everybody this. I don't care what the actual projections are. I don't care where they rank for their position. I don't see how not to try to make this my primary game stack. Now it gets incredibly expensive and I need crazy value elsewhere um, on DraftKings. On FanDuel, it's a little bit more doable, but it is really hard to do in the way that you'd want. Uh, but I feel like this is these are the two top quarterbacks for me, and they are these two teams have both played in the the, the games that that get you the most frantic and and can and can win you GPPs. I mean, Baltimore has won back to been a part of uh, millionaire winning lineups back to back weeks, and it's just a, it's a really interesting game because you both quarterbacks because of the rushing upside you can skinny stack. You don't need to necessarily double stack in this situation. I think it's really interesting. My favorite combination obviously would be the chalk, which is. For me, it'd be Lamar to, uh, excuse me, Lamar to Mark Andrews. I do like Dawson Knox as a lower own play. I think that he's gonna he's gonna pick it up if he is able to go. Uh, and then whether he does or doesn't, uh, I do like Stefan Diggs. As you can see, I put him up as part of my core this week. And I like Gabe Davis, even though he seems high priced. He's got massive upside as he showed in the AFC divisional round uh, last year against uh, Kansas City with the five touchdown game. Anyway, I love this game. I'm going to be all over it. The odd part is usually if I'm all over a game, I want something from the running back position, and I just can't quite get there. Um, Dobbins healthy, maybe. I don't think so, though. I think everything else, though, I'm interested in in this game, except for the defenses. How about you? Yeah, I'm kind of on the same page. Uh, what really kind of worries me here is obviously the pricing, right? Like 8400 for Allen and 83 for Lamar it those are really really stiff prices to get to especially if, if you are trying to stack them right Mark Andrews got a big price bump this week up to 71 where um, he belongs in my opinion as I said before the season I think he's gonna <laughs> beat Kelsey this year yeah for sure I'm with you there um nevertheless I mean still tough to get to right and if we want to be running it back with 
uh, somebody like Diggs, um, who is, you know, far and away their number one there, like 8,400 for him. Now, now you're, now you're kind of putting yourself in a tough spot. So, um, that's really the only reason that I would balk at this game. Uh, I'm kind of with you on the Gabe Davis, as far as the talent and the volume that he's going to see. Um, but we're also seeing a pretty aggressive price move on him as well. So um, they, you know, last week it was Isaiah McKenzie that, that went off and, you know, so all three of these guys are, are really going to be viable. If you're targeting this game, I think it's, I think it's fine. Uh, they are going to garner a good bit of ownership uh, pretty much across the board there. And when, at least for me, when we, we get a lot of, of ownership and some really high prices. Um, typically that's a, a pretty good recipe to come in underweight and, and try to get different with, uh, in some other spots. Um, so that's kind of where I lean, although I obviously do like the game and like, I have come in underweight on Lamar the past two, two weeks and it's, it's blown up in my face. So, uh, you know, <laughs> take everything that I'm saying here with a great assault. Yeah, too, yeah, right? yeah. But there's a lot um, of quarterbacks with upside, right? But none with realistically like four times a year, I'm gonna get you 40 plus at least. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like fading him, that's that's really the the risk you run because uh like you said, he's one of the few quarterbacks that we can get to um that can put up 40 and can have a 300 yard passing game and a hundred yard rushing game. Um yeah, he can Yeah, exactly. And you know, he doesn't really have a whole lot in the receiving core outside of Andrews, um, but their prices are still depressed. Rashad Bateman and Devin Duvernay yeah. are there. So um, I think getting a little contrarian with some Lamar stacks and and making it a little bit easier on yourself, um, maybe you can fade Andrews. It's, it's tough, but, um, you know, there's other tight ends you can play. Sure. And you can get to some Rashad Bateman for sure. They're, he's still going to target him, you know, they got to throw to to somebody other than Andrews. So uh, I'm with you Uh, as far as projections go. Like, like I said, they're going to be popular Um, digs coming in at, you know, North of 20% already in, in early week projections. So, um, you know, everybody loves to play him and uh, it's usually warranted. Um, But at, at 8,400 and North of 20%, um, I would much rather come in under on a lot of these guys Mm-hmm. Uh, especially digs and, and try to get to, you know, if I am going to target the game, just get to some cheaper pieces like an Isaiah McKenzie. Um, I am with you on the running game though. I don't really want to target any of this. Uh, the, the backfield in Buffalo is, is basically a split timeshare um, with Singletary and Moss there and the, their prices at 59 and 5,000. They're probably just a, a bit too expensive yeah, um, just compared to other guys, their range, like they both have, they both go off in a game and they put up 22. Exactly. Got like exactly. nine other guys who are going to probably do that, that are in the similar price range. And even that would take them going off, which they just seems unlikely. Yeah. They just don't very often. And you've got Josh Allen and Lamar there that really saps a lot of the upside for the running backs. And and yep. we still don't know if JK is totally healthy here. Right. And you know, mm-hmm. th- they'll play nine different running backs in Baltimore. Who knows what the hell they're going to do. Absolutely. So, and, um, and- by the way, with the, with that point, I just wanted to jump in because I wanted to yeah. comment what you were saying about receiver. Um, and we'll spend less time on every game. This is just hap- – I think this is an important one. There's games you have to get right. And look, and then the other I'll, – I'll have this none of this game in a lot of li- – in some lineups. I just think that really I'm going to be overly focused on – I don't care what the – ownership is i want exposure to bateman i want exposure to duvernay even duvernay scored three you know every every week this season i know one was a kicker return but that counts too and getting even minimal targets but having a chance at a home run ball and you know we're looking for value already in the slate if we don't find really really good value later on i don't mind including him in your stacks as well i don't think i would go quite as far as playing demarcus robinson but I certainly wouldn't surprise me if you saw a weird fluky guy score two touchdowns in this game. Cause I, I really think the game environment is going to be interesting. Um, if Baltimore, if I'll tell you right now, I'll just make a pick on the game. I like Baltimore to win that game uh, outright. And that's where I'm at. Yeah. I'm kind of with you, man. I think there's going to be points for sure. Um, but uh, you know, if you want to get contrarian with it, I think you can you know play Baltimore on the other side because Buffalo is going to be garnering most of the ownership. So, um, you know, Rashad Bateman showing him sub 5% right now, Devin Duvernay, you know, nobody's going to play him. Uh, you can, if you, if you want, you can, you can run a Baltimore defense, um, 
with Duvernay and try to get some correlation there. It's a pretty deep tournament play, but uh, it is in play because he's, you know, he's going to catch balls. Um, he's, it's in he, play also and because the re- and he's the receiving they're, guy. So yeah, yeah, and they're a gambling defense so far this season anyway. Yep. That is twenty five hundred. Yep. Um, and as good as Josh Allen is, it doesn't matter how many points you score. If, if you get one one Duvernay run back and then maybe a few sacks, which will happen with Josh, Josh Allen, maybe one other big play in the game, all of a sudden you know you have one of the highest scoring defenses in a game where you're still targeting the offenses too. Like it's just a, it's it's a very interesting game all around. I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a game I have very little interest in in any form uh, at any position. I don't want to op- for myself. I'm not saying for you. I'm saying for myself. I don't want to over talk any part of this. I think Dallas has a really good defense, like really, really elite level defense, and I think they're a really bad football team. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's but I mean, that, I mean that could change with just Dak being back. Uh, I think they've been run poorly. I think they've made some poor decisions. I think that they should still be giving Pollard a bulk of the work, not not splitting with Zeke. I think Zeke should be the secondary running back. If anything, the only part of this game that I'm, ha- I'm, I'm going to probably have ownership that might be above average or what, what's currently being projected is Curtis Samuel. He's averaging 10, 10 targets a week so far this season, uh, 12, 11 and nine. So actually he's a little over that. Um, I think this is a spot where they're going to have to be throwing. So I will take some Curtis Samuel this week. How about you for this game? Cause I don't think anything else is going to play for me. Yeah, I don't really want much here either. Uh, Carson Wentz, it, he just, I just don't think he's got enough of uh, enough of a ceiling um, on a full slate to to really get you there. And at uh, at a full six thousand, I mean, you can get a higher ceiling for a cheaper price. I think. I think Cooper and Rush is a better play than Carson Wentz by a lot. <laughs> I would, I would agree. I, I would absolutely yeah. agree. I'm not going to play um, either of them, but I, I just I, Carson Wentz. They got there the crazy weird game week one. I'm just going to chalk that up to that. Those are going to happen a couple times, but you're like you said, he's 6K now. It's, if he was literally the minimum at 5K, maybe we could have some conversations. Yeah. But Dallas's defense has been very, very good. It's not like we're trying to pick on a weak defense. I actually think Dallas's defense is probably the best play outside of maybe Samuel in this game. How about that? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I've I've been playing some of the commanders' defense, and uh, I, I think it's about time to jump off that train. Um, mm-hmm. I think they're going to end up giving up some, some points uh, all throughout the season. And they're, they just seem unlikely to be able to get a lot of pressure here. And um, you know, Dallas on the other side, I I'm kind of with you. I don't really want to play Cooper rush, but he's in play in deep tournament teams They're They got to throw the ball and um, they've got Michael Gallup back now, and they're going to try and spread it around with, with Noah Brown and CD as well. So um, this is, is not the worst uh, target. The only issue is on the run back, uh, Washington has been struggling to, to really get things going. Um, and they're going to have to score as well. If those Cooper rush, you know, CD lamb or, or Michael Gallup teams are going are gonna to get there for you. So that's really the only place that I really but bought. Even that would only kind of with you giant field tournaments, right? Ex- exactly. Yeah. You don't want to be playing this in, in short field you're stuff. To yeah. Yeah, exactly. You stay off of this stuff for the most part, like Terry McLaurin, he is one of the best receivers in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, but unfortunately he's got Wentz throwing to him and he's still 6,500. They, they've got Samuel there, as you mentioned, and Jahan Dotson now. Uh, so they're going to spread it. And those those three guys are still just, I think, a little bit too expensive. If anybody here, uh, I would play the two cheaper guys, Curtis Samuel and Jahan Dotson, um, but probably nothing, and certainly not in the way of of tight ends either. I mean, Logan Thomas is 3,300. You can punt him because um, they'll they'll use him, and they, they do use him a little bit in the red zone. Uh, and Carson Wentz has, has always liked going to his tight ends, mm-hmm. but um, really nothing on the offensive side for me. I do... Uh, I would probably focus on the defenses as well. Yeah, both the defenses, I understand. I, I do want to say that at some point this season, Terry McLaurin is going to just massacre a slate, and this could be it. I yep. mean, you have a gambling corner against him, even though he's a good corner. Like, it's it's it, it could happen. I, I just don't want to put – look, there's, we're playing a full slate here. We don't need to – you know what I mean? Like, maybe maybe wait for a, a different opportunity when he can really break against a really t- bad defense rather than a good defense. Um, yeah, for sure. And over here, I think, again, you see there's early ownership, and I get it. I'm completely fine with these plays. None of them excite me. Between Drake London, Amari Cooper, uh, uh, Corderell Patterson, who I was – Sheets and I keep taking credit. Before it happened, second week of the season, we started saying, 
okay, we're going to just play at minimum 25%, no matter what the matchup in Cordero Patterson. And this yeah. was when he was like, you know, whatever, 4,200 at first on DK. And th- they were clearly making him a target of their offense. I do like Patterson. I love Chubb in general. And I think Kareem Hunt is a really interesting play always, but it really depends on game flow. And in this particular game, I think that I'm probably going to be below the field, but I am open to all of the legitimate plays, London, Cooper. Um, uh, I think that I, I think you could make an argument for Mariota if he was going to be low owned, but unfortunately he's not. I do think the one guy, the, the, or the two guys who I, who I might end up just with regular lineups that, that might end up a little lower owned. I think we're going to see more and more of Kyle Pitts. Yep. And I think we're going to see, I think, I think there is something happening with Njoku. Um, so maybe we can get a little bit ahead of the, the feet, the curve on that. I think people are sort of onto it a little bit, but I think it's going to be still low enough. So yeah, I like, I like a bunch of different pieces. There's no way I'm stacking this game. I don't think maybe I'll throw in one Mariota lineup. I don't like that. He's getting even, you know, the early over here, we've been 7%, but I think he's actually like closer to yeah, She says I'm closer to 10. Um, I, I like, I, I could see this game being a game it's in the dome. Maybe I'll change my mind. I'm heavily focused on two games, two and a half. And this is this is one where I want the pieces a little bit, but I don't really feel like at the if they, if they get the ownership, I just I just feel like I, I can go elsewhere. I don't. This game could easily be like a seventeen to ten game. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just I feel mixed on this one. How about you? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you. It's kind of a stay away for me. I prefer the running backs for the most part, but I don't want to pay sixty five hundred for Cordero Patterson. You know, after we were paying four K for him, you right. know what I mean. Uh, I was heavy on him last week as well. Um, because they are going to use him and yeah, the last few years, they've really tried, like they haven't been totally convinced on just giving in the football in the back in the backfield, you know? And, um, he looks like he's gained a lot of weight too. And yeah, he's their number one and he is absolutely going to have slates like he did last week where he just pops for 30 and you're going to have to have him Mm -hmm. at 2% ownership. Um, you know, he's still unknown this week at about coming in five, six percent or or whatever so far. Uh a little bit of kind of a uh like a sneaky six to six to eight percent ownership on Mariota so far as well. Um kind of confusing because I'm with you. I I really don't like their offense all that much, uh, despite the fact that they, they kind of took it to Seattle a little bit. Um Drake London is you know, he's their number one, but he's sixty one now and uh, I would prefer just like you said, to get to Kyle Pitts. I think they're going to start using him a hell of a lot more mm-hmm. and, and he's sub 10%. And I think that's a really good play at 5k as well. So mm-hmm. um, if I'm going to get to anything in this game, or at least on the Atlanta side, it's going to be uh, probably just some, some single Pitts chairs, uh, probably no Drake London. I really don't like the price there. Um, like if you want to run it a super deep, tournament team with a Mariota London Kyle Pitts kind of deal I I don't think that's horrible Mm. um but uh for the most part yeah just Pitts on the Atlanta side and then Cleveland I really only want the running backs Uh, I'm kind of with you I I like both Chubb and Hunt like playing them both uh I almost prefer Hunt a lot of the time because they use him a what feels like a bit more in the passing game definitely um, yeah and he's well he's a hell of a lot cheaper uh obviously Chubb has the the two and, and three score, you know, 180 yard rushing game upside uh, that hunt probably doesn't, yeah. but um, you know, at six K, I think for Kareem hunt, I think that's, that's fine. Yeah. And I, I'd probably prefer to get to him than Nick Chubb. 7,900 is just a pretty stiff price for running backs. You can get a lot of, of volume and a lot of upside for guys or, you know, from, from guys that are a lot cheaper that are also that are not in a timeshare. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's why it's really always pretty hard to, to get to Chubb, at least for me. So uh, in this game, mostly just the running backs and pits, I think uh, probably no quarterback shares outside of like super deep tournament teams. Yeah, we're, we're uh, fairly much fairly in like uh, in the same place here. I do think there is a chance that I will throw in just a full on crazy game stack here because I, I could see the potential. Part of my problem is I have a little bit of tunnel vision right now on the Buffalo Baltimore game, which I know is going to cost me a fortune yeah. and nobody in that game outside of maybe pits. Can I play with that other game and, and, and be able to afford it? You know what I mean? Exactly. And that's, exactly. The, that's, that's my problem. And this is going to another one who's going to pop off ownership wise. I would rather play Mariota, I think than Geno Smith. 
I think I almost would sure. rather play Jared Goff in some ways. And as much as everybody hates him, though, like I've I think he's very capable of putting up 20 fantasy points. But if I'm going to play any quarterback that's not a top level guy right this week, I, I think I kind of want 25 minimum. And I just it just feel I just find that hard to to for him to be like most of the time here. I do like playing the Detroit games. This is the other game I'm considering. But I'm honestly considering it like it's going to be if there's if we have no I'm, I'm in Ross St. Brown. Whether it's Shark, I, I will go Josh Reynolds personally. They have a they have a nice connection going back to the Rams days, uh Goff and Reynolds. Sure. Um I I I I like the idea of uh, I like the idea of playing Metcalf and Lockett at this ownership, early ownership, but it's all over the place. And I know it's crazy. I, they're gonna have some ownership though. Um yep. and I don't like it. I, I want to get them on the week where they're three percent and I can get a three touchdown game out of one of them or something like that. Like that's I, honestly like in this game. Uh, I'm very open to the idea of Rashad Penny, but it's a far, it still feels off the, the, the play I like the most obviously is going to be the chalk, uh, Jamal Williams with no Deandre Swift, assuming that happens, I will have Jamal Williams plenty. And I will also have a lot of shares of uh, TJ Hawkinson. Uh, I think it's great value. I would, I would warn everybody. One thing with Jamal Williams, they, they like really like Jamal Williams, but getting the same amount of work, they will try to factor somebody else in, I guess, Craig Reynolds would be the obvious guy. But it's not – they'll use their backup running back basically all the time to run the ball after another guy has a 10-yard carry. They just pull – I just watched Detroit play way too much. Anyway, they'll, they'll pull up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, partly because I really like this team. And I really like Detroit to win this game and cover easily. Um, but I, I like – I mean, obviously, Jamal Williams is going to be the chalk first guy in for most people, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're showing him really probably not as high as he should be, just about – you know, thirteen percent mm. in in early runs right now, which is uh shockingly low. I think um you know just in the last couple hours we did get you know, a bit more confirmation that DeAndre Swift probably isn't going to play, yep. even though was, you know most people that are paying attention probably assume that. But uh, Swift is probably going to be out, and coming into the year, they really wanted to to use both of these guys really heavily, and um. They, you're exactly right. They they really do like him, and I like him a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, you know, 13, 15% ownership even is, is probably too low on him. So I think he, you know, as soon as DeAndre Swift gets announced out, you know, for sure, um, then I think he's probably a lock in cash at, uh, at 61. Um, not to say that I, I generally like targeting the Seattle run right. defense, um, but I think the the volume is just going to be too high, and there should be points here. Um, this line got you know opened up at uh, about forty eight. It was bet up to fifty pretty quickly. So, um, you know, market is kind of initially showing that uh, yeah they're kind of on the same page with you, Bobby, and that um, you know there could be points here, and you know we'll have to wait and see what what's going to happen with Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, that'll be you know fifteen percent ownership taken off the table and have to be spread elsewhere if he doesn't go. Um, he looked mostly fine. I watched the game as well. Um, he should be okay. He didn't practice today, but um, I, all signs are, are pointing to him being, being good to go for the weekend. Um, I do like playing golf as well. I'm kind of with you. Nobody's going to play him as, and they really never do. I would prefer him at a bit lower price tag. However, 5,900 is a bit stiff for him. I think because I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Um, I think you are going to need 25 and 30 out of your quarterbacks this week. And while Goff has it in him, it's just not all that regular. Um, especially if I'm in Ross St. Brown is out, it's, he's going to be, uh, he'll have a real tough time, you know, scoring in, in that scenario. So, um, for me, I would prefer mostly the pass catchers, uh, outside of Jamal Williams. Um, and I'm not super crazy about Gino to be quite honest, but, uh, I don't think he's bad. I, I really never have. And no, I, I, I'm not even saying that he is. I, I don't necessarily either. I just think, I think he actually gets ripped on way more than he should. When he, if you actually look at sure. the games he's played and the teams he's played on, he's basically done all he can do with given nothing, you know? Yep. Now he's yep. not Lamar. He's not Lamar Jackson where you give him nothing around him and he still is, you know, a guy who can win an MVP, <laughs> but he's not, he's not the number one pick. If he was drafted in the middle third round somewhere, people would have been screaming for him to get a job or like, a, or late fourth round or something like that a long time ago. Um, yeah. 
So I, so I'm, I'm with you and it, but I, it's just hard for me to see him getting there easily. Although Detroit, I, I have a rule. One of my rules is, well, you have to play every, try to play every Detroit, Detroit games get weird and the Chargers games get. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Like, and that's, and that's really why I, I I've been playing a good bit of golf. I've had 15% of him each of the first three weeks and um, it, it, it it's worked a little bit, <laughs> you know, but like this team is going to score and, and they want to throw the ball and, and there's variance with golf. Um, and, you know, despite the 5,900 and, and elevated price tag, I think it's, I think it's okay that you can, you can get to him, certainly pair him with Amon Ra um, and, and throw in a, a third piece with Jamal or yeah, with uh, Jamal Williams as well. And I think that's a fine stack. You can run it back with either Lockett or Metcalf. I think that's perfectly playable too. Um, I think that's probably the best way to approach this game is with that type of stack. And even though I really do like 5,400 on Gino. So um, yeah, maybe, that, and maybe, maybe playable the too. stack becomes more playable because you're playing Shark and Reynolds if, if St. Brown is out. Exactly. And I, I, I really like them. Shark as well. I, I think they're going to start to use him a good bit more. Uh, I'm more on Shark than, than Reynolds personally. Uh, I think there's a bit more upside in the – the $400 price difference there. Um, you know, I'd rather just pay for it, I think. Yep. And, that makes sense. But, uh, you know, I'm fine going to both of those guys, and especially if Amon Ra is out. Um, you know, there, there's going to be some some targets to go around for sure because Detroit can score, and, you know, there this is also Detroit. They'll give up points. Yep, 100%. Um, all right, let's move on. And th- those games, that, that that was my other ha- – these are my other half games, the, the yeah. Seattle-Detroit and the Chargers in Houston. Um, again, I always chart target Seattle and Detroit. So my first looks are always, I'm sorry, sorry, Detroit and uh, the chargers. So my looks are always going to be there. I am not playing a quarterback in this game. Um, I think that the interesting pieces become, okay. So if we, dev- if we have, if we don't have Keenan Allen back, then I'm okay with taking another shot again on, on Mike Williams. And I'm okay with going to, uh, uh, excuse me, the tight end Gerald Everett. Yep. But if we do have him back, I'm actually kind of interested in Keenan Allen. And I love Brandon Cooks with how much they're probably going to throw the ball. I even think Nico Collins is a re- is an interesting uh, large field play. Um, he had nine targets two weeks ago, and he's had games like – he's had moments like that in the past. Maybe desperately they go there. But the most interest I have is in the running game. I, I, I really haven't seen these teams uh, – sh- I don't think they have the ability to really stop the run. And I love Damian Pierce as a value-saving option. He fits in with my, my whole Bills – you know, Bill's uh, Ravens game. Yep. And I like Eckler. If you're going to break out, this is the time you should be breaking out. Yep. This is the team you should be doing it against. And I don't think they're going to give him all of the work that he used to get. I don't think it's going to be beyond carries, but if this game stays close, I think you could see him with double digit targets. I really do. And I, they, they just can't stop running backs out of the backfield. They can't stop them catching the ball. They don't have good linebackers. Um, so I, I, I am on this or they have one good linebacker, whatever. I, they, they don't cover the position. Well, I'm I'm very on the side of the running backs, and I think this could end up being a sneaky game to stack without using the quarterbacks. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Uh, I'm still a little worried about Justin Herbert, to be honest. Like yeah. I was, I was watching that game. He was wincing a lot um, every time he he took any contact whatsoever. Uh, I know they shot him up before the game, and they'll probably do the same again. But uh, you know, busted cartilage in the rib cage that's that's not nothing, right? <laughs> like yeah. that, that is painful, and um, that's really why you want to be targeting Herbert. He's not going to run a lot, so you need him to be throwing and you need him to be healthy. So yeah. that said, even if he does play, I would probably stay off of him at an elevated 7,100. Um, but I, I really do like Eckler as well. I'm, I'm 100% on board with you there. Um, he got eight targets last week. Like, they're yeah, going to use this guy. That's what's going to happen of, when they're down in the backfield. Game. And that was yep. a game they lost by 28. You know what I mean? If that game stays within 17 or something in the, you know, in the fourth and it's really a game or it's, you know, exactly. it's eight minutes to go. You might, maybe that becomes 15 targets. Yep. A hundred percent. Now Josh Kelly will come in and relieve him a little bit, but Eckler is far and away the number one. They use him everywhere. Like he got 10 targets against in, in a close game against Kansas city the week before. So right. um, they, they're definitely going to use him. He actually, he got a price drop from his eight K or whatever he was last week. So uh, I really do like that as well. Um, if, Keenan Allen plays the the sort of price inversion here that we've got with uh, Mike Williams and 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 Allen uh, that you know, that 
kind of raises <laughs> uh, alarm bells to me, right? Um, I want to get to Keenan Allen for sure, if that's the case. But again, I am a little bit worried about um, about Herbert. Yeah. If he do- if he doesn't go, um, it, he probably will. You know, he he didn't take enough contact last week to, um, you know, to really set him out this week but if he doesn't go i don't think playing chase daniel is the worst thing in the world okay i've played worse quarterbacks 100 percent agree with you uh but at five thousand, like he's the one of the cheapest guys on the board if not if not the cheapest and um i think that's perfectly playable because i think there will be some points scored they're gonna have to score here as well because i don't think houston is bad I mean, they're bad, right? But they're not. They're, that they're, bad. they're better of a bad than we thought they would be, I guess. Absolutely. They're not as bad as they have been in the last couple of seasons. And they've been competitive. Yeah. Um, and I don't, uh, frankly, I don't think the Chargers are, are all that good either. You know what I mean? Um, I think they're going to take third in this division and it could be fourth that the Broncos get it going with their offense. You know what I mean? Like yeah. um, they're, they're not great. And wouldn't surprise me either way with the chargers, they could win 10 in a row and they could lose hundred percent playoff race in, in five weeks. You know, hundred I mean? percent. So that said, I, I think this is going to be a hell of a lot closer than, than the line would suggest this opened at, at the chargers minus seven, which is a ridiculous number. And it got immediately bet down to five and a half. I made it even tighter than that. Um, I, I think Houston actually has some, a, a bit of, a bit of intrigue here. Uh, not that I want to play Davis mills. Right. But uh, I am kind of with you in that uh, Brandon cooks, like he's the only guy they got. Right. So, but, but, you know, let's, let's revisit that for one second. Why, why can't we play – if we want to stack up the pieces, let's say we want to play Andrews, Diggs, and then there's going to be some like an, a, an Eckler, for argument's sake. Yeah. Why couldn't we then play Davis Mills with uh, Brandon Cooks or Nico – and Nico Collins? As I'll tell you team? I'll tell you what. That's a, that's a really good, interesting stack is playing Davis Mills with Nico Collins and then running it back with Eckler and then going to get some of the more – you know, Mark Andrews type pieces from, from the other games. Yeah. Um, I think that's really interesting because, you know, despite the fact that I, I really, I, I rarely play Davis Mills. I just don't think he has any upside. I think I really that, like him as a player. Um, like I just, I just, he's yeah. just not great. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just, he's, he's kind of like Gino. He just manages yeah. games and uh, he's not going to, he's not going to beat you all that often. Right. Um, but I, I do think he has 20 or, or 22 in him, and that could very well be, you know, uh, enough to make you very competitive. So yeah. uh, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility because, again, I'm I think this game is going to be close, and the total is is getting uh, some action to the over as well. So yeah. um, could be some sneaky points in this game. For if the Herbert most comes part, out it's and just... Herbert, Herbert's playing and he's firing and they score, you know, two touchdowns right away. Then they get a stop and they score either a field goal or a touchdown. And then you just basically are playing air it out football for three and a half quarters for yeah. the other side while Eckler gets to eat up the yardage. Just yeah. feels like it could hit that there. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like Houston has put up what 20 and three straight games, I think. Yeah. And, um, now they could put up 30 here very reasonably because let's not forget Joey Bosa just went on the one on the IR with yeah, torn yeah, groin. So the Chargers um, just gave up 38 at home and lost by 28 the other day. Exactly. Uh-huh. This team is is not very good over here. So yeah. uh, I think there's some at sneaky the moment, upside. Yeah. yeah, I think there's some sneaky upside for Houston for sure. Yeah, the one thing that does scare me is I, I think that the Chargers with their weirdness, like they almost always play every game within a field goal, same as Detroit. But yeah. then every now and then it's like it's a forty to nothing game. Like they win forty to nothing or they lose forty to nothing. It's sort of like last week. But I don't think it's gonna happen back to back weeks. And I think that they are struggling enough to where I think this should be a good game. Yep. I'm gonna be a lot shorter on a lot of these other games because th- those were my, my heaviest interests. I'm okay with Jonathan Taylor. I I'm not in love with it like other people are. I'm okay with Michael Pittman, a little expensive for the other stacks I want to combine. I'm not playing either of these quarterbacks, although I would say that. Tannehill at really that that cheap maybe even you could argue for Matt Ryan but it's it's factors in if you want to take a shot but for me this is not the game I'm targeting I think that playing you could argue for playing these running backs and like just just have them in 10 percent of your lineup so you don't miss anything you know they're gonna there's gonna be 40 fantasy point games for them but I don't have I don't want to make this a priority this week and I want to kind of target on the ones I'm targeted on which we've already talked about three of them and these next games I'm just not as interested in 
Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Uh, these next few games, uh, three, at least three of the next four, we've got some super low totals and some pretty bad offenses and some bad quarterbacks, you know? So um, I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't really like, first of all, like Mac Ryan's going to chuck it. Right. So um, there's upside there. And he's going to focus in on Michael Pittman. We saw what happened week one, right? Um, but realistically, the Colts want to run the football. And they wanted, like, JT hasn't gone off yet. Um, and they want to focus on on the run game. And so do the Titans, right? They've got Derrick Henry in the backfield. And these guys want to run the ball. And the, the projected total here is sitting at about 42, 42 and a half right now. Um, that it certainly doesn't suggest that there's going to be a hell of a lot of points. Um, now I play, they play slow, so, don't they? I mean, that's the thing. Tennessee, they do. Indy they do. plays slow and Tennessee plays slow. These yep. are slow playing teams that you sort of need something weird to happen for it to really be a shootout game, but both running backs are really viable, right? Yeah, I think they're viable. It's, it's the price tags that make me balk at it, right? Yeah. Like 8,800 JT when uh, you still need volume a lot. And, um, you know, the Colts and the Titans, like Titans, they, they've been gashed on the ground this season so far. Um, so that really is, uh, you know, the best kind of fundamental spot, but no doubt like 8,800 is stiff to get to, especially when, if you want to target some, uh, some more expensive quarterback receiver stacks. So um, I think he's a, a good play. He's only coming in, you know, sub 15% at the moment. Uh, I think he's good. And like I said, the Titans have been, giving it up in spades on the ground so far. Um, I don't think their defense is very good. So you could very well see something crazy with uh, with the Colts just like blowing the doors off here. Um, I think it's reasonable. I don't think it's very probable. Right. Uh, I'm with you. I think it's going to be just kind of a slow, grindy game, kind of a typical AFC South Titans Colts game. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, they're just going <laughs> to run it into each other back and forth for, for three and a half quarters. And then, Maybe you'll get some garbage time out of Matt Ryan and Ryan Tannehill. So yeah. um, that said, I do think that if you want to run, you know, since the Titans have been so bad on the ground, I think if you want to run some JT at 88, I think it's okay. And then you can run some sneaky kind of uh, Tannehill, Traylon Burks teams. Uh, I Big think that's down. really strong. Um, or even Robert Woods. I, I'm not crazy about the Robert Woods. I'd prefer Traylon Burks, but uh, I think that's, an interesting way to go and probably the way I would attack this game most often. Okay. Fair enough. And um, I'll just throw out that Robert Woods is a guy I would rather use without the quarterback. If I was yep. gonna put the quarterback, he'd have to be in addition to another receiver for me um, because he's, he's going to do his, some of his damage from on the ground. They're going to run a couple sweeps for him, maybe one knee breaks and he's going to get targeted you're not going to get him like he's not going to put up the 200 yards receiving game. You know. Like, yeah. He's, this isn't, I mean, this isn't Matt Ryan in the Rams offense with Robert Woods anymore, you know, like so right, right, his, right. his upside is, is definitely sapped. But he's, sure. but I would say though, I think that he's better than people think. And I expect some games out of him that are at least solid going forward. If he drops below 5k, I'm going to start, start looking a little bit. This is yep. an interesting game that I don't really like. I really, there's no way there's no quarterback I'm playing here obviously not a game stack. And it's interesting because you're going to need a lot of ownership in this game. Uh, both running backs are extremely viable. Uh, if, if Montgomery's out, I like Herbert. If Humber Herbert's out, I like Montgomery. I'm sorry, if uh, Montgomery's in, I like Montgomery. Um, more so, I like Herbert if, if Montgomery's out, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like there's a little bit more play-breaking ability. And I feel like there is, even though Montgomery is steady, going to get you there. I feel like Herbert is he's still a little cheaper. And that 500 does matter this week. Yep. Um, and you don't really have anybody else to contend with. Uh, what else, what else, the, the other big, big thing in the game is what do we do about these giants at some point? Like some, I mean, Richie James, I put, I, I tagged him as one of my core guys because right now he's a value that makes sense that I could easily be, it could be Sills. And by the way, you know, it might be by the end of the week for me, depending on what the, what I hear. Um, it might be Galladay. Uh, Galladay's yeah, the 3,900 receiver I've ever seen. He hasn't, <laughs> he hasn't even caught a pass in a couple of weeks and he doesn't want to be on the team. Yep. But somebody's going to have to catch the ball. Yeah, man. I wish they'd be using this. I, I, I wish they'd use Kadarius Tony, man, and just let him loose. Like this kid is an athlete. Um, but I don't think he's quite there yet. I'm probably going to play him again, <laughs> you know, and I'm probably, it's probably going to blow up in my face right. again. Um, but, uh, 
Yeah, I'm kind of with you. It, the the Kenny Galladay, uh, like there's some there's some smatterings and some whispering that uh, they're gonna involve him a bit more. And you know they need something because these passing I mean, this games was, are this just guy terrible. Was one of the best twenty receivers in the NFL like a year and a little over a year ago. Like yeah, uh, you know yeah. we're two seasons removed from him having a top. I think it was like a top maybe higher than that on a horrible team. And I think that I just don't understand whatever's going on. I don't think it's a physical thing with him. I think there's just something going on. So if he's, if he's back in the game plan at 0% ownership, but it'll, it'll probably spread out to where if it'll, the word will get out or something, but it's just like, if he goes off and I don't have him, I'm going to like, <laughs> so I'm going to have, I'll have 5% of him no matter what. Um, yeah, and I think that's perfectly fine. You don't need to get crazy with some with some yeah. of these guys. Like nobody's going to be playing them. Um, all all of the receivers are going to be well under five percent. The only guy that's going to see James will be higher. Yeah, uh, Richie could very well see some. Um, but uh, Tony and Galladay, you know, nobody's going to be play, playing these guys because it's really hard to play them because uh, Danny Jones is is well, he ain't it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so. Really, the only guy that's going to be seeing any activity from the rest of the markets is is Saquon, of course, and and at eight thousand, I think he's playable as well. You know, you like think these... both running backs for Chicago would be would be pretty highly owned, depending on which one it was. Um, right. I now, feel like Montgomery so would be true. pretty chalky. Yeah, he actually is. He's coming in if he's if he's in and he's healthy. Um, you know, he's going to see you know eighteen to twenty percent probably, and. Yeah. To be quite honest, I I really don't like playing David Montgomery when he's when he's chalky. Hundred um, percent agree with you. Last week hurt. That hurt. Exa- man. Exactly. I fully faded him. It was like a, a last. He got hurt, game. unfortunately. Yeah, play. yeah. Herbert, I Herbert mean, I, goes off. I, if he has Herbert's game, we're all okay. Of course, we played say thirty percent. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. No, I'm with you. Like I I faded him. I just didn't like the price, and I wanted to get to Cordero Patterson uh, instead. So I just I just fully xed him, and I got lucky. But yeah. Um, you know, if he plays this week, he will definitely see because these teams they want to run the football too. You know what I mean? This is very similar to yeah. Tennessee and Indianapolis. Um, because like while Justin Fields is very, very talented, uh, the game's still a bit too fast for him at the NFL level. Yeah. And the, it's also the Bears, they don't really have a whole hell of a lot um that they put around him just yet. Yep, yeah, hundred so, percent agree with you. Um, I'm, I'm with you though, in the running game, it, it'd be mostly the running games here for me, um, outside of some super deep tournament darts on, on like a Tony or a Galladay, but, uh, I do like Saquon. I prefer Saquon even at an elevated price tag to David Montgomery because it, at 18 to 20%, 6,200, like no thanks. I'll just go elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, especially now that Khalil Herbert had this game last week. Uh, this is a very, very highly touted prospect coming out of school Mm -hmm. and this guy got a lot of work in college and he is a horse in the backfield so um i have a feeling they're going to really try and and lean on both of these guys going forward and at these price tags uh, i really don't want either of them to be unless montgomery's out you'd have interest right of course absolutely absolutely at 5700 yeah yeah you'll see you'll see the the ownership figure probably flip from 17-3 in favor of Montgomery, uh, all of that ownership will go to Khalil Herbert if he is out. So, 100%. Um, yeah, I'm with you, though. I like him at 57, and they will definitely – like, Giants are bad. So um, they'll definitely give him a lot of work, and he's he's a really good play. Yep, I love it. Um, oops, that's the wrong thing. Uh, another game – this is a game, uh, zero interest, uh, completely have massive respect. Zero interest, like, as a game stack. Yeah. Uh, tons of respect for Pittsburgh. I think Najee Harris is a tremendous play. And I think Deontay Johnson is a tremendous play. Um, Deontay Johnson, poor guy, give him a quarterback. I actually think you like, if there was a week I was going to play Trubisky to try and stack up those other things, this would be it. Um, I, some people are saying that about Zach Wilson. I have too much respect, respect for Pittsburgh defense. Yep. And I, I actually think that like Deontay Johnson, you could play a, like a Deontay Johnson, like he should be played on his own. In my opinion this week, he is getting really unlucky and still getting like kind of getting there every week. You know what I mean? Um, all he, you get a couple of things on your side. You have the two touchdown game. You're boom, you're there. And I could actually see both, both he and Najee in the same game going off. Um, I don't think I'm going to play them in the same lineups, but they are both priority plays for me. And that is 
all I really want to talk about with the exception of maybe you could take a shot on Garrett Wilson. Um, that's where I'm at. I like Garrett Wilson. Uh, I've loved, okay. loved him in college. Um, and they're, they're going to be using him a lot more going forward. Um, he's good, huh? Oh, he's a stud, man. Like kid, kid is elite. And uh, unfortunately, he plays for the Jets, and he's got Zach Wilson throwing in the football. But I'm okay. I'm actually like okay. Like I like that combination. Like you're going to see some home run balls. You're going to see 25 yard catches downfield over the middle. I, I could see this working out actually because Wilson does have a can. And, and by the way, it worked with Flacco. But Flacco, say what you will about Flacco, but Flacco will fire it downfield. <laughs> like, yeah, he has. Yeah, they chuck it, man. And yeah. um, you know, Zach Wilson, he does have. You know, despite the fact that there's a lot of variance with him, he does have some upside and. Um, you know, at fifty two hundred, that's you, you could you could make worse plays. Like you could play Trubisky on the other side, for example. Uh, <laughs> I actually think Trubisky's know. a better play just because there's a little bit of rushing upside. Like yeah, for he sure. runs one in, less likely for Wilson, right? Uh, I yeah, a hundred percent. Now I'm I'm gonna be a little uh a little careful with Zach Wilson going forward. I want to see that he's healthy, and um, I'm I'm not totally sure that he is. So uh, I would probably just stay off of him and, and not run stacks outside of like super deep tournament stuff. But um, for the most part, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like the total in this game is at 41 and a half and Pittsburgh had both, both of these guys have pretty decent run defenses. And honestly, I don't, I don't want to attack the, um, the Pittsburgh pass defense all that much either. Like they got Minka back there and Minka is a stud. So um their defense, it's they they deserve better. Najee yeah. Harris deserves better. Just give them a real quarterback. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Give them that's an what... actual guy who's an NFL quarterback. And I don't mean Baker Mayfield. I mean like yeah. an actual NFL quarterback, like a, a very middle of the road average quarterback, uh, a guy who's the the 18th best quarterback instead of the 32nd in the yeah, NFL. Yeah, yeah. Give him give him a Geno Smith or somebody. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. Even Geno. Yeah. Um, something something like that. But Trubisky is just. And he just hasn't been able to figure it out outside of those, you know, couple of games. Yeah, he had those crazy uh, years. When he won <laughs> exactly. Yeah, a couple yeah. years ago, right? But um yeah, if I were to go to any of the pass catchers here, I think I would prefer Chase Claypool uh to Deontay Johnson. And it's just a price thing. Um I think you're gonna need some salary saving this week in order to get to some some more expensive plays that you're probably gonna want to play. They just um, pepper Deontay every week. They do. Like he, I think I like Claypool too. Yeah, I, I like them both. Um, and again, unfortunately, it's just they got Trubisky throwing them the football. So I would I would really temper expectations for um for the passing games here. Uh, really, like maybe some sneaky Jets upside mm-hmm. with some Zach Wilson. Uh, if you want to jump on the on the train that hey he's just coming back and um they're gonna use Garrett Wilson then, uh, you know, have at it, you know, run it back with either Deontay or Chase Claypool. And, um, you know, nobody's going to stack a game in it. That's got a total of 41. So yep. it's uh, it, it allows you to get to, you know, construction wise, um, you know, nobody, nobody's going to have it. Right. And it allows you to get to some very popular plays elsewhere that people will have like the digs, like the, um, you know, the, the Montgomery's if he plays that, that type of stuff. So for the most part, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of off of this game. Um, I just, outside of maybe some, some Wilson or some Claypool pieces for me. Yep. Um, okay. Pretty much where I'm at. Let's try and we'll go a little faster, but although this is going to be a tar- hard one for me, cause this is my other game that I'm targeting. Yep. Um, the strongest, I, I, I believe Jacksonville is good. I, you know, what's crazy. I do too. You, you have a, you have a six point spread here. Okay. If this game was played two weeks ago, even before we knew how good the Eagles were, it would be a 10 and a half. Yeah. And now we know the Eagles are really good from everything they've shown so far. And it's only six, which just leads me to believe more. I also like the over on this game, like crazy. Um, Jacksonville, whatever game script happens, if they are forced to air it out at all, I i mean, I love playing Trevor Lawrence this way. I do too. Yeah. I love it. I have four quarterbacks that I'm dialed in on. It's the two from the first game, the Buffalo, uh, Lamar and, and uh, Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts and, and Trevor Lawrence. Those are my priorities. That's going to be the majority of what I'm doing. Um, I love what Jalen Hurts has shown. Uh, I've always thought he would be a really good fantasy producer. I think he's becoming a good quarterback. I've watched him make plays that he wasn't able to make 
a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that he is, he's really on his way. I also think Jacksonville is much better on both sides than most people think. I think they are also the kind of team that's going to play in some weird shootout -y games because of the way they play and yeah. because their defense will gamble. They just happen to get away with everything against a banged up Herbert last week. So they look awesome, but I don't see a lot of ownership here. I, I if, if I, if I can go with uh Chris, Chris Kirk, I'm totally good with Zay Jones as well. They seem to have a connection and it's happened a number of times. I know people get annoyed by Zay Jones because of all the times for the Raiders that we were supposed to be, Oh, he's too cheap. And he's got all this talent. Well, Trevor Lawrence is super talented. If Trevor Lawrence was playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I would just bet them to win the Super Bowl until they were like the favorite. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. No, I'm serious. That he's because he's he's gonna be that guy. I, I don't. I, I have nothing to believe that it, anything different. I think they were the worst coach team in the NFL this year. I think they're an average coach team now, and I think yeah. that makes a really big difference. You could even argue they're about better than average now. I like every part of this game. I like I like Goddard better, but I like both tight ends. I'm open to the value for for Ingram. I still believe he's talented enough. I like Chris Kirk. I like Zay Jones. I like AJ, Devontae, and Marvin. I'll be mixing all of that in with different forms of stacks. And I am not going to be touching the running game. I love James Robinson. I don't like that the job wasn't his. But because of the recent coach speak, I may change my tune on that later in the week. Just that they're so impressed with what, how he's come back from his ACL and everything. And it doesn't make me feel re rejuvenated that they're going to give him like 25 care, 25 touches or something because yeah. um, they like ATN, especially in the passing game. But uh, I'm pretty much all into everything in this game, except for the running backs. I, I think I'm not going to fall for this Miles Sanders trap anymore. I'm just not doing it, man. It, it, he doesn't get any carries inside the 10 yard line. He doesn't get any goal line opportunities ever, ever. It's all going to go to Hertz. It's going to go to Boston Scott. It might go to Gainwell on a weird play, or they're going to throw the ball for it. it, it Philly's going to try to run up every game. They're they're capable of putting fifty on someone. This might be like just that really weird like forty two thirty five kind of a game, and I I could see both teams just just going off, and especially if Philly gets up big early. I I just think it's going to force Jacksonville to throw the ball. I love my by far my favorite value on the slate of a quarter at quarterback is Trevor Lawrence. Again, this is not a cash game play. This is a, a tournament play. And I think that they're, I think, I, I mean, I love every piece of this. I'm not going to play it all five pieces together, but I will find a way to play four guys from this game in a ton of my lineups this week. Yeah. I'm kind of with you, man. Um, there's, there's really very few games that we can target. Um, and it, not many are, are going to be sneaky, right? Uh, it's either games that you want to stay totally away from or games that you want to get all of. And this is, uh, there's, there should be points here. Um, now Philly has been really, really good against the pass so far. And that, that worries me a little bit, but yep. I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you. Um, I think Trev is going to have an excellent season this year. And I'm also with you on the Zay Jones train. Like they, they're starting to use him a lot more and 4,200 is a fantastic price tag for him. Um, all of these guys are, are under 8% Trev coming in, you know, sub three right now. Yep. Um, but 6,600 for Kirk as well is, is perfectly respectable. Uh, I think you can get to, to James Robinson also. Um, I am not as worried with this timeshare as I am with the one in Cleveland, for example. Um, I, I still think this is James Robinson's job and they're, like you said, they're very impressed with him. Um, this okay. season I like and, and I, this. he's my guy i love him. yeah yeah i i really like him too uh they're gonna use him still in the passing game and you know let's not forget that etn's a rookie here and uh he fumbled on his first touch or whatever it was right so um he may be in the dog but the word out of camp was how much they love him oh yeah they absolutely the running do. back and, i mean he was yeah. the guy who they were supposed to be using not not robinson start the season apparently yeah no they're yeah uh they're they're not gonna you know completely cut him out or anything um, but it's still Robinson's job and, you know, they, they're going to give him every opportunity, uh, in the backfield and they're going to use him in the passing game too. Um, now ETN will still get targets. So as, as Robinson's price keeps kind of creeping up a little bit, you know, he gets to the 7,000 range. I think it, I think you jump off. Um, but at 64, I think it's still playable. And, you know, he gets to the 67, 68 or something like that. Then we can start to you know, go elsewhere. But um, I think all of the pieces on Jacksonville here are playable. And, you know, on the other side, I, I like Philly too. You know, we, we know that they can score. Um, 
the AJ Brown at 74 is a little stiff to get to, I think. Um, I'd prefer to play Devonte again. And yeah, you know, I was, I had like 35% of Devonte last week. I'm probably going to do it again. Uh, I think he's too cheap. Oh, good for you. I love, I love Devonte. I said it to start of the year, but I actually heard all, all the things in camp or how much they're throwing it to AJ Brown. But if you get the right matchup, like last week, you know, against the slot, Minnesota is terrible. They can't guard the yep. slot, save their lives, even going back years. And Devonte just completely like torched them. Um, but no, I'm not, not, not Minnesota. What am I talking about? I got the wrong team. I got the wrong matchup. What was Philly's last game? Uh, uh, yeah, it was, no, it was, who was it? Uh, Washington. Washington, excuse me. Washington last Whatever. week. Yeah. No, Philly didn't play Washington last week. Um, yeah. It was Am I a... crazy? Did I get it mixed up? I did. Yeah, I did. The, yeah, Detroit fault, also Washington Washington. Didn't cover the slot. Yeah. Sorry. I went through the whole thing. I went and I totally got mixed up there. Um, but you saw like literally that because of the no, no action on the first big game against Detroit, where by the way, they, that game felt like they had it in hand in the first quarter and then mm-hmm. Detroit, you know, did their Detroit thing. <laughs> um, the only thing that worries me about this game is that both teams defenses, I think are really, I think they're good. Yeah. I'm yeah. Jacksonville's you. not underrated anymore. They've given up 10 points in two weeks to teams that can score. Yeah, for yeah, for example, like this game is sitting six, six and a half or whatever where it opened, and I made it tighter than that. You know, I made it Philly five, and and I felt that that was a little bit high, to be quite honest. Like I'm I'm bullish Jacksonville this year. Uh, I like their offense, and I really do like their defense. Um, Me too. Uh, so but I'm kind of with you. Would either of us be surprised if Philly won the game thirty-eight nothing? No, of course not. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe, maybe thirty-eight zero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, you know what I'm saying, though. Like just where they dominate because they yeah, look if, so far, they've looked like they could do whatever they want. Yeah, and and that's really kind of what worries me uh, in the NFL. I think when you play, uh, it when you play the momentum game like that, I think you get burned a lot. And yep. um, sure. Philly is Philly's really smelling themselves right now, and and I think Jacksonville is good enough to come in here. I think they can win this game. Um, so I would be careful going crazy with Philly. I think the number is too high. Um, yeah, they're going to score points, but like, I prefer the Jacksonville side. I, I like James Robinson. Um, I would, uh, really like getting to, to the passing game, um, with Zay Jones. I'm like, I, I tried the, the Marvin Jones nonsense again, and it blew up in my face again. Um, they're just going to, they're just not going to use him. And it, it's Kirk and the Zay Jones show. Um, they're trying to get Evan Ingram going. They're really trying. Yep. And he almost I had that re- touchdown last week. Got, oh, got... I was so, yeah, I had so much of him. I, I was so I frustrated, know. you know, so they're, they're trying to use him and um, it's a, this is a balanced offense down here and they're, they're very dangerous. They can put up some points on 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 philly here who has i don't want to say you know a weakness but perhaps a vulnerability in, in the running game and that should open up the passing game uh and allow trevor to work a little bit so um that's fair yeah i, I like points in this game and, and i like jacksonville um certainly in dfs uh definitely at this ownership again they're they're coming in very low um you know quickly we'll look at uh at philly's ownership you know, you're you're seeing twelve percent plus on eighty two hundred dollar Jalen Hurts. We're starting to get a little carried away here. Okay, like this is. Well, I don't know though, are we though? Because I think he's I think he's just the notch of upside below. Uh, I mean, he's the most consistent, uh, but probably just the notch of upside below Lamar, uh, Mahomes, and and Allen. I don't think he's that far below from a fantasy perspective. I actually feel like there's a game flow that each of these games he could have. I think he could have had fifty in the first game. I really do. They ran the ball a million times. They could have run the, the play for him and have it ha- gave him four rushing touchdowns, five rushing touchdowns. They ran the ball five times or four times in um, from like the, the one yard line. One of them was him. The other ones were, one was a, one was an, op, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, an option. And uh, they, they, that one went to Boston Scott. Like it just, they, they, they don't need to be. I, I just think the upside for him is much higher than people think in general but I understand that 8,200 at that ownership is probably getting a little carried away this week. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I do still think he's, he's a tier below the Mahomes and the, oh, he's nowhere near as good. World. I'm just talking from a fantasy perspective. Oh yeah, for sure. No, I, he definitely has the upside and I'm with you. That's why you can't play. Like I, I landed on so much Miles Sanders last week at 5,500 and I do it every time and it beats me every time. Um, I'm 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 about done with it as well. Like yeah. he got a he got a he got a bump to 6K this week, 
and uh like th that's a full stay away from me i want yeah. nothing to do with it now that said that's typically where you want to jump on um after he burns everybody and he gets a price bump then he he comes out the next week and he's you know drops 160 and two so um i i think if you're he stacking doesn't this do game, that though. <laughs> yeah he, 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 you're right and and with jalen hurts now and with Devonte, you know Previously, they had seven running backs or whatever, and they didn't have anybody uh, in the receiving core that uh, the quarterbacks could really go to. Right now, they've got both AJ Brown and Devontae here. And, and I, let's not let's not overlook Dallas Goddard's the top, 100%. probably the fifth, top. What is he? What is he? The fifth or sixth best re receiving tight end? Uh, yeah, at least. I mean, I'd say he's top five for sure. Um, yeah. and they're going to give him a boatload of work, especially in a 100%. tight game. And he's so, going to get low ownership this week because his projections are terrible so far. Yeah, exactly. He's only coming in at, you know, 6% right now. So right. Um, you can absolutely play a bunch of pieces from this game and there should be points. But that said, you know, this is two good defenses and two pretty good teams here. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if we see, you know, something similar to the, the, the Buffalo Miami game of last week where it ends up 21, 19 or whatever the hell it was, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, two good defenses here and I wouldn't go crazy with the ownership and, and I wouldn't just all go all in on this game, but uh, I do like pieces. And for the most part, um, you know, I, I think you can stack it for sure. I prefer Trev at the, at the 57 or whatever he is mm -hmm. uh, than the 82 for Hertz and because 82 and 74 for Hertz and AJ Brown. It's a little hard with so and many. You're hard to like build teams. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. With, with so many, um, other pieces that the Eagles have that it's just kind of hard to get to. So um, that said, like, again, my favorite is, is Devonte at 58. Uh, I, I really like Goddard at, at 45 as well. Uh, and on the other side, it's uh, it's James Robinson and some Zay Jones for me, but uh, some Trev and, and some Christian Kirk too. You know, I, I like yeah. the game for sure. Yeah. I could say right now, what I guarantee you one of my lineups will be Zay Jones, Chris Kirk, and Trevor Lawrence with Goddard on the other side. And then I'll actually have enough to play Stefan. I'm just doing it right now. I'll have enough to play Stefan Diggs and play Mark Andrews in the flex. Yeah, there you go. And all of a sudden, it, I think I'm, I think I have one thing I'm sure of is I think running back is going to be most likely my flex this week. And I think tight end is going to be my second most likely. I really believe that because I have such a strong andrew's appreciation <laughs> i think that's a good construction given that we've got so many um kind of boring games here yeah uh, i think you can get to i think you can play three running backs i think you can i think that's if you're playing cash i think that's all you're considering is playing three running backs uh this week yep. and trying to get to some high volume receivers for sure i like yep. that construction a lot yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I'm okay with McCaffrey in this game. I'm going to keep this one a little bit shorter. Um, this this game is a game that I will probably build one single stack and, and try to go for it because I still think Arizona can be one of those crazy teams also, and we just haven't seen it yet. Um, Carolina, I think, actually has more talent. They just happen to have a horrible quarterback. And I'm really sorry for DJ Moore. He's better than a 5,300 receiver. Uh, Rondell Moore is a priority play if he plays for me. And I am I'm okay with McCaffrey, but I'm not going to be above the field or take a giant stance on him. I'm not playing the tight ends very much. Uh, basically, it's just those guys for me in this game. Yeah, I mean, I think this could be one of the few games that could pop. It's going to be pretty pretty much ignored. Um, but I think uh, Arizona's got some question marks in the secondary. And even though Baker stinks, like – they they can still put up some points here, I think. Um, now, I'm with you on CMC. Like this kid is healthy and he looks excellent. Um, they they're gonna give him all the work. I'm really glad he didn't score and go off last week because I'm I'm gonna play a truckload of him this week. Uh, I really really like him. He looks excellent. Um, and I think we're just about to see, you know, the the end of these these lower. Uh, CMC prices, even though he's not even that cheap, right? But um, I think he's going to explode soon, and and you're going to see him. You're probably not going to see him cheaper than nine thousand the rest of the season. Uh, he looks really, really good, and and I like him a lot in this spot. Um, so I think you could get to some sneaky like like Baker CMC DJ Moore teams. Um, 
something like that because Arizona has been awful. That's an interesting and, millionaire stack. I, I, but by the way, and all I say about Baker, the guy is still he, every year he has the one one week of the year where he wins the, somebody a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, you know, fifty two hundred I mean, the week. Why not against Arizona? Exactly, fifty two hundred. Like you don't want to be paying fifty nine hundred for him the week after he does it. You know, like so jump on the train right now at 52 um and Should we maybe consider a kyler skinny stack with rondale moore for sure now with rondale moore that like they like this kid yeah and they run and bubble really, screens for him and home run hitting passes like a hundred percent and this kid this kid's got a ton of talent as well like he tore up the big 10 uh for years and it like they they didn't really use him a ton down the stretch last year, which is really frustrating because he is a PPR monster and because they're just going to throw him these bubble screens and just kind of let him go. Yep. Um, and so I think that's a really good play. They also, they also had their, you know, they had a one year younger uh, and and active who's not even uh, AJ Green. Yeah. They had a, <laughs> they had a, uh, they had a guy, a little guy called DeAndre Hopkins, who still is arguably when he's healthy, the one of the best receivers in the NFL. And yeah. as much as people like Marquise Brown and the Dorch thing is cool, sure. If Rondale Moore is there, I, I really like Rondale Moore in a skinny stack that allows you because then then you even it out, right? Like it's basically like getting a fifty five hundred quarterback with a five k receiver, and then you've got your beginning stack. You run it back with McCaffrey, and then you could play still some of the the Bills game if you want to. You yeah, absolutely. Some of, some of these other Jacksonville Philly things if you want to that are expensive because that's that's going to be the name of the game. Is it's just all pricing is so tough this year. Like, and I like it. I, I think it makes it more challenging. But yeah, just, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I, I like this game a little bit. I think it could be sneaky. It's got a, a sneaky total. It's not down here in the 40s or or up in the, you know, upper 40s or or low 50s or anything, you know, kind of right pegged right in the middle. Um, so to me, that that tells me that the market is, is not totally sure what to do with these teams. And um, those are the types of games I really like targeting. And I think Carolina, I think their offense has a lot more potential, even with Baker back there, than they've than they've shown quite yet. And I think it's going to be all driven through CMC. And when he's healthy, like he is, he's still the best running back, and and is still still the best DFS back um, in the game when they give him targets. And the good news is that Baker, he can't throw it more than thirty yards down the field, so they're going to dump it off to him and, and just let CMC go. So uh, I think there's some sneaky pieces that you can get to here. Uh, I do like some run backs. I think they're still using Zach Ertz um, and he's definitely playable too. Uh, he's their number one and they're not going to go to anybody else. Um, now the, the prices on, on, on Dorch and, and Hollywood have come up considerably because, you know, Arizona has been trailing so much. Um, so I'd probably stay off Hollywood. There's a lot of variance with him. And at 6,900, I think it's too high. You can get some some higher upside or more consistent upside elsewhere, I think. Uh, 5K Dorch, I think, is still playable. Uh, we're, we're starting to get into the territory if, where... If Rondale Moore plays, though? It, yeah, if if Rondale plays, I, I'm probably off both of those guys, and I'd prefer yeah. Rondale. Um, but I, th- I, I do think 5K Dorch is, is still in a playable range. We start getting into the 5,800... 5600 range with him i think it's it's probably time to uh um to hop off but yeah uh, as of now i think it's it's still okay and and nobody's gonna be playing kyler either so i i think um it's like an unknown kyler and kyler as we all know in september and october is a monster <laughs> like, exactly and really... he's got three guys above him in lamar yeah um josh allen, allen and jalen hurts that uh you know, all the ownership is going to go to them and Kyler at, you know, this guy's got just as much upside as any one of those guys. hundred percent. Um, and he also has the rushing upside. They will use him. Oh, absolutely. Or he's got a scramble or whatever down on the goal line. And, um, you know, this kid is as, as shifty as anybody in the league. So, uh, at, at, you know, what, four per 5% ownership, sub 5%. Yeah. Um, I really like even just, going skinny Kyler or naked Kyler. I think that's perfectly fine. Maybe pairing with an Ertz or something or a Rondale. Yeah. Um, I think that's perfectly fine and run it back with a CMC. You can run it back with CMC and more if you want to, actually. I think that's both yeah. viable considering Arizona 
we have question marks about their defense, but we know they can put up points. So if it yep. goes, you know, and that's what you're looking for, right? You want to find a game script that can lead you to, to victory, not what the average thing is if you're trying to win a tournament. Yep. And that this is one of those. That's why we're going so in depth on some of these things. Um, let's let's move over to the uh, New England Green Bay game, which I, I think that I do think Green Bay is going to roll them. I buy into that. Um, I'm I'm sort of wondering if I should, but. I think that it's a little too much love for AJ Dillon and the early projections and not enough love for Aaron Jones. I think this could be the Aaron Jones 40 point game. He just put up 30, you know, um, yeah. I have no problem with Aaron Jones. It's a price thing. A little bit tough. Makes sense. And I, and they love AJ Dillon. I love AJ Dillon. Uh, if this was a sh- any showdown slate, AJ Dillon has won me a lot of money on showdown slates and Packers play a lot of them um, because, you know, back in the day it was it, last year, it was, I think they played five of them and it was always everybody going to Aaron Jones and everything. And AJ Dillon, AJ Dillon, the captain worked out well a number of times or not even necessarily the captain, just a, just as a play. And he was way lower on than he should have been. I like Dobbs. Um, I think he'll get a, the the bulk of the passing work. I like him in general. Uh, I'm not going to really touch this game outside of that, except for playing some Packers defense if I can afford it, which is going to be hard to do. Yeah. I'm kind of with you. Um, you know, for anybody that hasn't heard yet, Mac Jones has a pretty severe high ankle sprain and he's going to be out. Um, well, he'll, he'll very likely be out. I don't think it's been announced officially yet, but, um, so that said, like this, this total is at 40 and green Bay's laying 10. So like new England's not going to be able to score here. And, um, I don't really want anything to do with them. Uh, no running back pieces. No, I'd like, I don't even want any Devonte Parker or Nelson Aguilar, you know, I, I just want none of it. And on the other side, I'm kind of with you. Um, I would prefer AJ Dillon because this is one of those game scripts where they don't use Aaron Jones a lot. Um, and AJ Dillon could get, he could get 22 carries in this game pretty easily. I think um, now wow. that's a big number. Well, yeah, it's a huge number, but that said, it's like, 20, it could be, you tell me you get 22, 22 oh, carries this game. You, you got my money. I'm in. Oh, I, well, yeah, absolutely. Right. But I'm in. Um, that said, like, that's not to say that he's going to get that kind of work. Right. But uh, at 7,500 for Aaron Jones, if AJ Dillon gets 15 carries, even you're kind of sweating a little bit. Right. So um, I'm with you. I do like both of them, but this is again, a, a pretty, heavy timeshare and it's it's hard especially in these types of game scripts to um you know when they're laying 10 in a total of 40 to really want to get all that much of either of them um you know but that said aj Dillon he could pop for two scores right on the goal line here very easily and only get about seven carries or something like that uh on the other side aaron jones could pop for three if he'd have one of his games and you know at 7500 uh, he's sub 5% right now as well. So in deep tournament teams, I think that's perfectly fine. Um, in cash, I would probably stay off of this kind of stuff. And I don't think you need to go there in, in shorter field type of stuff either necessarily. But, um, you know, at this type of ownership, like Aaron Jones is, and, and AJ Dillon are both well in play. Uh, I would personally stay off the passing game here. I just don't think they're going to need it. Um and I'm really not sure what they want to do. Just individual yet. value at 4,500. Don't you think he stands out as the value? He, yeah, he's absolutely cheap, and and I do like the price for him. Uh, I just don't like the game, right? And I don't think they're like sure they could he could catch six, eight balls or something, 75 yards and a score, uh, and that gets you there. Um, but I That's they, sort of they I still. Pictured. Yeah, I mean, they still have Alan Lazard. They're using Robert Tunyon a little bit more now. Um, and with Lazard healthy, he's still the number one there. So, uh, and Romeo Dobbs. I agree well, that Lazard is the number one, and I actually have always said he's more talented I, than, than people think. Yeah. I'm not sure that Romeo Dobbs is not the number one. That I mean, you, you got an argument. I'll tell you that. Um, the thing is with – it's it's Aaron Rodgers back there. Yeah, he's he's true. frustrating – to play with when he's got a, a bunch of different weapons uh, or it's frustrating to play his weapons when he's got a bunch of them. He's similar to Tom Brady, right? Right. Like, because he just sees all of the offense and all of the defense and, and, and he just throws it to whoever is open. And uh, you know, so it's difficult to, to get there with any one piece a lot of the time. 
Um, so with two pieces there, even three with the Tunyon, I think it's a little more difficult. Um, so I would mostly focus on the run game personally from the Packers, but, uh, and their defense, of course, like you mentioned. Um, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't fault anybody for, for taking a punt on Romeo Dobbs at 45 here. Yeah, that's, that's what I've got from this one. Let's move on to the last one. We'll close it out after this. Um, I see the argument that cheats was tried to make on our video that was basically, this is his favorite game stack. Um, I'm having like trouble it. with it. I like it. I like it. It's creative. And there's, there is a, you know, Sutton and Adams, wonderful plays. Adams, I, I think his ownership going to be suppressed a little bit this week. Uh, Mac Hollins, if there's no Renfro, I get it. Um, I've watched a team that hasn't put up 20 points yet in Denver. And I see a team in with the Raiders who literally can't con- seem to convert on a third down because they target only one guy. Yep. Maybe it works out this week. You know, <laughs> um, I-, I like the Darren, Darren Waller has a great history against the Broncos. I don't think that necessarily has to mean anything, but there is a thing and these teams are our rivals and Darren Waller has lit this team up a ton. Always an interesting uh, tournament play when he's low on because he can put up the same kind of Mark Andrews type games and at their best. He's like the one guy outside of Kelsey and Andrews that can really put up that 35 fantasy point game from a tight end position. I don't know how likely he is to do it with Adams there. I like Josh Jacobs, but I think at this, at, at high ownership and his current projection, I don't know if that's really, that's eh, kind of lower a little bit. Um, I, I'm just waiting to see where ownership is on that one. I think this is, this is a game that I'm either going to stay away from or stack. That's where I'm at with this one. I'm I'm a, I'm on Sheets's side here. Ooh. Like I, I I like this game. Um, I'll tell you what. Like that last drive, the Broncos have been terrible. Okay, <laughs> like they have been awful. But the last drive of that game last week, they unlocked something, and you could just see it in the momentum shift. And you I think they're Bronco about fan? to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that's what's uh, happening right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what's going fan. on. Yeah. So I I think they're I think they're about to explode here. Um and. I don't believe in the Raiders defense. Uh, I I think there could be some really sneaky points in this game. Uh, this is another game with a total kind of in, in the mid 40s. Uh, I don't think the market is really all that confident, certainly not confident in the Broncos yet. Right. Uh, but really not all that confident in the Raiders because, um, you know, they blew a freaking 60 point lead against the Cardinals or whatever. It was. I don't even know how that happened. That's, 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 that's when you, when you coach yourself out of a game, in my opinion, you stop playing football and you start playing, protect the score. And it just, it's harder to do it. It's harder and harder to do. And teams don't learn. That's yeah. why we saw so much of it in one week, right? We saw three, no, four games that were over that the, other, that the team that was, that was getting crushed won. Yeah, the, the Jets scored 17 points yeah, in two minutes Dolphin. or whatever it was. The Dolphins, Dolphins were getting too. smoked, and everybody's saying, oh, maybe yeah. you're right. Maybe Baltimore is the best team in football. And all of yeah, a sudden – they, they give oh. up 40 in three minutes. You're like, okay. Right, exactly. It's like, what just happened here? Yeah. Well, I – yeah, to that point, like, uh, I'm with you. I, th- I think Denver's defense is excellent here, and that really is the only kind of um, – kind of hitch that i run into mm-hmm. uh i i really don't think Derek Carr's all that good i never have he just makes some boneheaded decisions uh a lot of the time and, and he's supposed and to be mr consistency that's the weird part like i don't understand he really is be something he really be one is. or the other be mr consistency or be the guy who's gonna turn the ball over take some gambles you know like i don't know yeah. he's weird and then he'll take like, the worst game i don't know Sorry, yeah, keep- you're right. No, no, you're right. Like he, he just, he's very hard to peg. And uh, at 5,800, I think there's value there. Um, if this, if this game goes like, I think it's going to, I think Denver's going to be able to score here because I don't think the Raiders defense is all that good. And I think they're really about to unlock something with Cortland Sutton uh, and Jerry Judy. And it's a talented group. Very, very talented. They're probably, I mean, they're one of the most talented offenses in the league, if not if not the most. I said this know, last year; they've got to pieces bottom. all over the place, and yet you just can't quite can't quite seem to put it together. Maybe yeah, they need J- like a, a, a McVeigh or somebody to come out in there because I know you guys like your coach, but like, come on, how can you not unlock this talent? And like, yeah. based on their talent, they're too cheap. And by the way, I even like KJ Hamler. I don't like him as a play, 
but I like him as a home run threat for their team. Like they've got pieces. They've got a, their line should be better than it is, has been. They've got some pieces here, man. Why aren't they better? Yeah, they, they, then, like I said, I I think they're about to explode. They haven't played, they didn't play together in the preseason or, or anything like that, you know? So it's taken them a little bit to kind of sort of get their, uh, get their hooves under them as it were. Um, but I think they're they're about to take off, and we're not we're not getting Russ here at 72 or 7500 or wherever he's been. He's down at 67, which is a playable price. And with Cortland Sutton here, he's sub 10 percent. Jerry Judy sub six percent as of right now. the The backfield is is frustrating still to get to. Uh, their number one back is and should be Javante Williams, but for some freaking reason, they're still giving the ball to Melvin Gordon. This is Nathaniel Hackett, and he came over from the they Packers. Just don't, they just don't trust Javante as an every down back. That's the truth. And and, and it's really really frustrating that he has. Yeah. Um. And by the way, Melvin Gordon used to be the guy who was had these issues before when he was with the, the Chargers. Yeah. So it's kind of a weird combination. You don't really have like a power back, but they're sort of using Melvin Gordon like they're 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 every down it's carry back and then Javante third down back. Yeah. Third down it, back kind of like it's but it's weird and they mix them up. It's just it's confusing, man. Yeah, yeah, and it's really frustrating because Javante Williams is an absolute monster. Um, this kid, wise, I agree. Yeah, like this kid breaks tackles and he's got speed and he can be a three down back. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. Um, I don't know, think Melvin... he's big enough and strong enough to be a three down back personally, but I I love I love him as a player. I just I just I like that they have a combo backfield. I just think there's a better option than Melvin Gordon out there. They, they could use not I mean, AJ Dillon would be ideal, but like somebody like that to sure. combine with Javante Williams, you know? Yeah. Like, so there, there's plenty of pieces on this offense. Um, they've even got Albert O there at tight end. Mm-hmm. Um, like he is very, very talented. They traded oh, Noah Fant. Yeah. It, you know, he was, this guy was a first round draft pick for them. And yeah. um, they traded Noah Fant away, you know, to get Russ. So um you know, there, there's plenty of plenty of different pieces here. And Albert O at 3,300, like that's a, they don't use the tight end a lot, but, you know, it's starting to get into territory where we can really start considering punts on Albert O uh, with this offense. Um, but Denver in particular is one of the offenses I think you're going to want to jump on board before it happens. It may take, like it. Might, not, might not be this week, but they're going to explode. And it, Cortland Sutton is, is going to just pop and and you're going to need him or it's going to be Jerry Judy uh and it's like they're both going to have you know the the DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett type games where you just have to have all three of them including right. Russ and okay. or okay you know and, and now I I don't think that well I, I'm not sure if it's going to be this week I think it very well could be um because I I do think they unlock something on that final drive against the Niners and they had a lot of confidence having been able to win that game after about 10, three and outs that they had. Yep. So uh, I think it's very, very viable to, to play some Denver here. Um, that said on the other side, I, I really do like the Darren Waller as well. Mm-hmm. Denver historically, like they can't cover the tight end. It's so it's not just Darren Waller. I think he has three 40 point games against them. I'm not hundred percent on that, but it might be three 35, 30 something pluses. It's literally something like that though. Well, like Travis Kelsey comes in here and and he just torches <laughs> them every single week. Like, you know, they they just for years they haven't been able to been able to cover the tight end. And you're right in that, um, you know, Darren Waller is one of the few that can really pop it at super low ownership. I'm not wild about the price at 56 because there's still a lot of variance and his quarterback is still Derek Carr, right? Um, but I think it's very very viable to get to pass catchers on the other side. Uh, of of Denver stacks um not crazy in this spot about Josh Jacobs uh I I think Denver's run defense is going to be fantastic this year so um really kind of tempering my expectations there but I think this could be there could be some sneaky points here um with some some Russ Cortland Sutton Judy stacks uh if you're stacking in a bunch throw some Albert O in there uh, and and definitely play some Waller and absolutely play some Mac Hollins and uh, you know on the other side, I think um, I like it. so certainly if Renfro is out. So um, and and of course you can always play Devonte. Uh, he's going to get 86 targets. So I I do like the game. I'm with Sheets on this one. Um, you can also play uh, some Denver defense. Don't like I I'm not crazy about uh, 
Oh, actually, they're only 2,700. I thought they were 3,700. Um, they're 2,700. I think that's a pretty good play, too. Um, I think Love that. All different angles of this game. Um, and playing, you know, playing within the division here, I think, um, you know, like you said, this is a rivalry game. Um, I think there's there's some opportunity to uh, to jump on board before everybody else does. I'm into it. I could see it going the the, the 15 to 12 route, and I could see it being, yeah. you know, the 38 to 32 route or something like that, 30, yep. 31. Um, all right. I, li- I love it. I think we covered everything pretty much in depth. We did a really long one, but guys, this will give you some idea. This is how Goldie's mind works, and it's a great – I feel like we have a good combination w- with each other because – we actually, you know, see things from a little bit of a different perspective. There's a little more feel and bias in my side. You're very numbers oriented, but you also like these wild plays because you see what's happening. Um, and I appreciate it, man. I think you did a really good job. And hopefully we'll we'll be doing this every week together. And we will uh, also have Goldie's projections and, and, and every, his, his aggregated information, everything he's got um, up on the site uh, in the near future. I don't want to give an exact date, but we will have it up there shortly. In the meantime, you can always find Goldie in our Discord um goldie anything else before we get out of here no nah, man like get different this week i think you can get to some some really sneaky kind of middling total type of games um you know stay away from the bad quarterbacks and the bad offenses obviously but uh you know take some chances if you're trying to um get wild with it get wild with it you gotta you gotta do some things differently um in order to get there in football there's a lot of variance so embrace it and uh and get after it so good luck everybody good luck everybody uh we're out